we'll start the session so quickly i will walk through the basics of pmp which we have covered as part of the demo but for the benefit of the newcomers who have not attended the demo it will be beneficial for them so let us see about pmp and pmi certification so it will be a repeat for some, for someone but please bear with me for the benefit of your friends so that they are new for this so pmp stands for project management professional the full form of pmp is project management professional and pmp is owned by pmi project management institute usa it's a not for profit organization with a motto behind to propagate the best practices in project management they started this pmp certification so in order to propagate the best practices while managing the project PMI started this PMP certification and PMI is an organization which was founded in 1969, such a world organization, right? It's a not-for-profit organization, as I told you before, there are no commercial interest behind. I, I request everyone to mute at your end. If you have any questions, you can unmute and you can ask or you can put it in the chat. As well. so I request you to mute at your end. You can right click on the name and yep on your name and you can mute it yeah thank you and pmi is an organization founded in 1969 and pmp is a credential and pmi is the one who manages and monitors the pmp certification exams you can know more about pmi by visiting their website www.pmir.org so this is the website i am putting in the chat www.pmi.org you can know about pmp and pmi to understand the final analysis of it and pmp certification is globally recognized certification and it is one of the most respected certifications in the world when it comes to project management and this pmp certification is valid for 3 years and every 3 years you have to renew your certification by obtaining pdu what is pdu pdu stands for professional development unit what do you mean by this normally it's a human tendency as we discussed before once you get certified you will relax you will stop learning new concepts or new development in any field in order to curb such an attitude what pmi has done is even after certification you have to obtain new developments or you have to augment your knowledge by doing some other training so you can attend some webinars podcasts webcasts some sort of uh, new developments that are happening in uh, across the world and each one hour of learning is equivalent to one pdu professional development unit It means you are professionally continuing to develop you are not stagnant your knowledge is not stagnant so you may get new trends in project management like agile project management you can attend some training pertaining to agile project management so if you attend for 15 hours of training pertaining to agile project management 15 pdus will be added as i told you every one hour of learning is equivalent to one pdu in that way you have to gain 60 pdus in a span of 3 years so you have quite sufficient time so in a span of 3 years you can earn 60 pdus right 60 hours of new learning you have to do there are some approved webcasts podcasts by pmi you can watch those webcasts or podcasts online or you can attend some trainings like six sigma itil some new learning which will complement your pmp your project management knowledge so these courses will complement each other and these learnings will be considered as your professional development units it's not only you learn even you can spread the knowledge of project management you can conduct some trainings related to project management in your organization officially and you can claim those hours as pdus even that is allowed it's not that you train your sister or brother in your house that cannot be counted as pdu it, can, it should be done officially uh, in your organization right and these things are considered as pdu so 60 pdus the moment you do 60 pdus every 3 years it will be renewed automatically 
even i do that every 3 years so i do conduct the training so i claim that i conduct the trainings i attend some seminars some webinars and i collect the pdus and i claim in my account on www.pmi.org website right so and one thing which i want to set the expectations if anyone is not clear with any of the concepts feel free to stop me you need not wait for the entire training to finish unless it is not relevant then i will take it offline separately for that particular person if it is very much relevant please stop me get your doubt clarified and we'll go to the next topic right you need not feel any intimidation in asking the questions you shoot the questions i am ready to explain if you are not clear i am ready to explain any number of times there is only one motto no one is going to step out of this training without understanding the concept right feel free it's a free hand i am giving to you all right and pimbok the next topic is pimbok pimbok stands for project management body of knowledge is a official guide that's released by pmi against which this entire training will happen and even your preparation will happen again as this pimbok project management body of knowledge so this is a official book that that will be taught to you as part of this training it's an official guide is a textbook right now why pmp is required pmp is required what are the benefits normally it's a normal question we always put right what is in for me what is in for me why should i do pmp without benefits normally we don't do anything we don't do any activity so now what are the benefits pmp can impart to your career road map if you undergo this pmp training and if you get certified it helps you to become a better project manager because you will be knowing the best practices on how to manage the project how to manage the project successfully and these best practices are collated from numerous myriad project managers across the globe because best practices they are not confined to one organization best practices can be followed in any organization best practices can be followed in microsoft so certain best practices can be followed in ibm certain best practices can be followed in oracle in different companies they may be following the best practices so what pmi has done is they collated all these best practices they collated all these best practices and they published this pmp course right and if you know the best practices what if you know the best practices it helps in increasing the success rate of your projects as you become more organized you know how to plan meticulously you know how to ensure that the execution is going as per the plan or not you will know how to monitor whether the execution is going as per the plan if not how to control the situation so obviously when you are organized the success rate of your projects will increase 21% is the success rate of the projects across the globe across various domains in 2013 2014 figures are yet to arrive because we are early 2015 so what is the success rate in 2014 we are yet to arrive on those figures so if 21% of the projects are successful across the globe it means 79% of the projects are failures which is a shame why they don't follow the best practices even without following best practices also you can do the projects no one goes no one going to stop you but if you follow the best practices the success rate of your projects will increase and if you follow the best practices it helps in minimizing the resource utilization maybe with lesser resources you can run your projects when i say lesser resources need not be human resources it can be anything your raw material your equipment your tools your softwares your licenses right so when lesser resources are utilized obviously it helps in making the project cost effective isn't it so instead of 10 people if you are using only six resources to do a project there is a 40% cost effectiveness obviously human resources they translate into money in it especially and it changes how others look at your ability people will start respecting you the moment you start using the terminology and the lingo your managers will respect you your peers will respect you your reportees will respect you people will come to you 
for help and you will be proud to lend your shoulder about the best practices in project management and the materialistic benefits if you see it help to keep your job to get promoted or to get a new job normally these are the benefits we really look at right uh, pmp certified normally organizations prefer for pmp certified guys right so it helps in your career road map as well and hike in your current salary so these are the various intrinsic and extrinsic benefits pmp can impart to your career so these are very basics and uh, the exam eligibility requirement under two categories you can take the exam one you being a graduate i hope everyone is a graduate here if not even diploma holders also can pursue this pmp certification like your iti diploma polytechnic diploma who are not graduates actually so this is one prerequisite out of three prerequisites if you have to take the examination training anyone can take training anyone can take no one can stop you in Uh, knowledge acquisition everyone can take the training but if you want to get certified and take the examination three prerequisites one is the academic qualification what you have to possess and second 35 hours of training is mandatory we call it as contact hours contact hours so through authorized training center like xlr or any training center you, with through you you have come back, right through authorized training center you have to undergo this training 35 hours right contact us we call it so this is mandatory and 3 years of experience in projects is required within the last 8 years in a span of 8 years you may have some intermittent gaps but still 36 months that is 3 years of experience is mandatory if you are a diploma holder you need to possess more years of experience that is 5 years 5 years experience is required if you are a diploma holder right <clears throat> i'm quickly going through because as part of demo we are completed if someone again i'm reiterating if someone has any doubts feel free to stop me and the examination pattern four hours duration you will be taking in a prometric exam uh, pmi prometric examination center it's a four hours duration and you have 200 questions out of this 200 25 are considered as pre-test questions or dummy questions but we never know which of this 25 are pre-test or dummy questions that are embedded in 200 you have to think all 200 you have to answer in the examination however only 175 are scored for the examination result and a grading system is followed they don't disclose the percentage gentlemen remember they give only the grades whether you pass or fail whatever they will disclose the grades saying whether you are below proficient or proficient or moderately proficient overall that's the only result that is disclosed one is whether you are pass or fail and what is your grade that's it and there is no negative marking there is no negative marking so even if you are unsure you can still take a shot because you are not going to lose any mark even if your choice is incorrect so there is no need to mark and the entire syllabus is divided into five groups we call them as five process groups remember the entire syllabus is divided into 47 process and these 47 process they belong to any one of these process like a process group like initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling and closing it means in a project you will be doing some management activities as part of project initiation so even you don't start the plan so the just project kick starts the project initiates during that stage you will be doing some management activities so you will be getting questions as part of this initiating stage how many questions you get 13% is a percentage of questions 13% of 200 200 is 26 questions so initiating you will get 26 questions planning 24% 48 questions 
so once the project is initiated you do a thorough planning right which is very very important so you have to develop a detailed plan on how are you going to manage this project right so pertaining to planning you get 24 percent of the questions that is equivalent to 48 questions you will get and then the executing so the most important aspect is you have to execute the plan so as part of project executing you will get 30 percent of the questions that speaks about the significance of execution why execution is very important the problem lies here it's a human attitude we make great plans but one when once it comes to execution we never do that we plan that in two months we have to finish pmp certification in one and a half months i have to finish pmp certification you prepare a great timetable right saying by monday i have to finish the first chapter by wednesday i have to finish the second chapter by friday third chapter you make great plans but we never kick start the preparation or even if you start the preparation doesn't go as per the plan and it keeps on procrastinating the the postponement keeps on happening execution that's where most of the times we fail even if you want to shed your weight or if you want to get some fitness we make great plans we have to get up early morning we get a, make a great plan till evening on how to control the diet everything but the problem is we never execute it so when the execution fails obviously the project objectives are not met and the project will fail so executing you get 30 percent 60 questions majority you get from execution and then monitoring and controlling as a project manager or as a senior project management team member you have to monitor to check whether your executing is going as per the planning or not that is one of your primary jobs isn't it so if the execution is not going as per the plan you have to control the situation controlling is very very important so your execution says by this day you have to complete 40 percent of the work sorry your planning says by this day you have to complete 40 percent of the work but whereas your execution is only 30 percent so there is a delta of 10 percent where the execution didn't happen so how do you control it how do you pull up your socks and you see that the project comes back on track how do you make up the scheduled delays how do you control the budget delays how do you control the scope creep sometimes the scope will be added indiscriminately customer will give 100 requirements next day he will make it 120 requirements next day 150 requirements so without any control the scope changes will be made how do you control such situations so you do the monitoring and controlling and pertaining to monitoring and controlling you will get 25 percent of the questions <coughs> that is 50 questions you get from monitoring and controlling and finally closing closing even as part of project closing we have to do some management activities like you have to release your resources whoever are left over you have to release those resources you have to claim you have to settle all the claims any payments that are due to the vendors you have to archive all the documentation and the artifacts that were developed as part of this project you have to document the lessons learned as part of this project you might be learning many lessons that this is not the way how uh, this should be done and again if any other opportunity is given you will work out differently so the closing so even during closing also you have to do certain activities normally in real time projects how it will happen customer will accept the deliverable for example customer asked to build a website that is the project you will build a uh, website and customer is happy he says he is happy with the website and he accepts the deliverable called the final deliverable called the website so you start celebrating we assume that the project is closed as the customer has formally accepted the deliverable but but there may be many other activities which you have to do as part of closing those best practices will be dealt as part of this closing process too. 
and you will get 8% of the questions from closing that is 16 questions 16 questions remember these five are called process groups why i told 47 process are grouped under any of this i told there are 47 process the throughout syllabus we have 47 process these 47 process either they belong to initiating or planning or executing or monitoring and controlling or closing so these process are grouped together which are related to initiating which are related to planning which are related to executing which are related to monitoring and controlling and which are related to closing so these are called process groups so first important thing we are entering process groups there are five process groups what are those five initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling and closing i am giving you 30 seconds time try to remember this see remember 98 percent of the concepts we go by logic but two percent of the concepts you have to by heart like names there's no other go like you have to remember the names right so i told you that this training will give you a lot of knowledge there will be a great takeaway i can assure you that and apart from that i will take this training in the examination perspective also at the end of the day you have to gain knowledge and you have to gain the certification as well so i will tell you to remember to by heart certain things you have to do that i'll give you some homework you have to religiously do that right and i'll tell you how to prepare at different stages and you have to meticulously follow that if you follow my instructions if you take my word you will be pmp certified very shortly and if you don't study on a regular basis on a day to day basis it will be very difficult for you to get certified on pmp right because so many concepts it becomes very difficult right so i hope you are all with me in remembering or, or in following my instructions yeah. wonderful so there are five process groups i am giving you 30 seconds time i want everyone to remember the names of these five process groups i keep on asking in between like what are the process groups i keep on asking you the questions i want you to come up with the answers by remembering and by regular study i am giving you 30 seconds time wonderful we'll start so now we'll start with the first chapter project management framework in project management framework we study about the basics of project management we don't deep dive into any of the advanced concepts because you should be familiar with the basics in order to understand the advanced concepts and you'll get quite a number of questions from this project management framework right in the examination so you should be familiar with these basic concepts of project management remember there are 11 chapters all put together the first one is the project management framework and the rest of the 10 chapters i will tell you at the end of the session about those 10 chapters briefly now let us start with the project management framework as i told you we'll start with the basics the very basic is definition of a project what is a project this definition is important for the examination you will get at least one to two questions in the examination from this definition based on the context of this situation you have to answer that so make a note of it whenever i say it's important somewhere you collate all these important topics somewhere so that it helps in preparation for the examination so what is a project a project is a temporary endeavor the word temporary is important here this is one of the characteristics of the project what do you mean by endeavor attempt doing some attempt and this attempt is temporary in nature what do you mean by temporary a temporary is something which has a start date and end date temporary means it should have a start date and end date i'm putting in the chart it should have a start date and end date a project should always have a start date and end date normally many projects they don't have end date in real time i'm talking which is 
technically wrong, especially government projects. If you see the projects which are run by government, they have a start date, but we never know when. 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 Okay, so a project is something which has a start date and end date, right? And why do you undertake a project? So a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken. Why do you undertake a project? To create. We do a project in order to create a unique product, service or result. So three outcomes are possible by doing a project. The first outcome is product. For example, you are a project manager for Apple Mobile. You are developing a new model of Apple Mobile. So you will take it up as a project. It will have, it, it will have a start date and end date. And the outcome is product. New mobile, new model, S7 or S8 or whatever. It's a product here. By doing this project, you are giving a product. Or you are doing a research and development for diabetes. You are developing a new molecule. You took it up as this research project. A new medicine for diabetes here you have a product or you are developing a new flavor for coca-cola orange flavor or lemon flavor of coca-cola coke so it's a product here and sometimes the outcome can be a result we'll see service last the outcome can be a result we do projects in order to achieve some result for example literacy projects we want to achieve 100 percent literacy in a particular state or in a particular county or in a particular country it's a result why are you doing this uh, lit uh, literacy project to attain a result called 100 percent literacy or you want to eradicate polio from your country you do this polio drops or polio vaccine project it is for a result to see a polio free india or a polio free country so if you take this polio drops project you know this polio vaccine project it has been running for the last 20 years or so right the outcome here is the result it's not on it need not be product every time and sometimes you will create a service by doing a project remember providing service is not a project it's very important providing service is not a project the capability to provide a service that capability you take it up as a project for example you want to provide some services to your customers you want to set up a call center so the setting up of the entire call center can be taken up as a project you are creating a service there or you want to provide atm services for a bank assume that there is a bank they don't have atm services that they are providing to the customers so you take it up as a project providing that entire atm service you take it up as a project right like designing the entire atm system designing the entire network for this atm system designing the infrastructure and subsequently building that infrastructure building the entire atm service and that entire thing you will take it up as a project so here you are creating a service remember and providing service from there is not a project is not a project it falls under operations for example you are manufacturing the new flavor of coca cola la orange flavor that you will take it up as a project because there the product is unique in nature now let us come to this third one unique very 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 important the outcome of a project is always unique in nature you don't get or if you are doing a recurring activity or if you are getting a recurring result then it is not a project the same result should not come it should be unique in some way so when you are manufacturing this new formula of coca-cola orange flavor it's a first of its kind till now coke that they, they doesn't have the orange flavor by doing this project you have created this unique product unique formula but from there it goes into manufacturing and millions of coke bottles will be manufactured orange flavor bottles will be manufactured that becomes the manufacturing or operations that is not a project 
that's typically operations the typically operations so operations are different projects are different manufacturing is different projects are different in operations or manufacturing you get a recurring or repeat product or outcome always whereas in a project it's always unique so now let us see again what are the three characteristics of a project i am putting in the chat have a look at it the first characteristic says a project is always temporary in nature what do you mean by temporary in nature it has a start date and end date The, out, the outcome of a project that is being cre created is always unique in nature. Is always unique in nature. You cannot have the same result always. In some or the other way, it should be unique. And the creation will happen pertaining to a product or service or result. result. So these are the three characteristics of a project which is temporary in nature, start date and end date, and outcome is always unique, and outcome can be a product, service, or result. So this is the definition of a project. And you may get different questions articulated in different way in the examination. Like they throw you a situation where the outcome is recurring in nature, and they may ask you what is wrong with this. So you have to choose the choice which says, the outcome of a project is always unique in nature, so this is not a project that performing operations so something of that sort you will get so as i told you you'll get at least one or two questions in the examination pertaining to this definition what is a project is it clear you can put it in the chat may not unmute uh, for this you can put in the chat is it clear Right, gentlemen. And now let us see. And now let us see the difference between a program and portfolio. You, you hear these words in and out every day, right? Program manager or program management, portfolio. You'll be hearing these words. Now let us see the definitions of it, right? In fact, after project management, we have next levels in PMI program management pgmp i am a pgmp certified and the next level to program management you have portfolio management so now let us see what is a program so devraj asked demiac cycle can it be part of a project why not it can be taken up as a project right the, the in six sigma right the, you will be doing the define measure analyze all these things can be taken up as a project. The entire thing, Six Sigma project, the implementation itself, or refining the Six Sigma, Dem Demiac or Demdev, whatever, DMA, DV, anything can be taken up as a project. <clears throat> anything can be taken up as a project as part of, as, as long as it suffices these three things. It should have a start date and end date. Outcome should be unique. Either it should produce a product result or service even if you are conducting an event of marriage of your sister you can take it up as a project the entire event management of your sister's marriage can be taken up as a project there's nothing wrong in that so now let us see program management what do you mean by program group of Related projects is called a program. Two, three projects together is called a program. But we have a catch here. They should be related. There should be, in, there should be some relation between or among these projects. Then it can be called as a program. If they are not related at all, then it cannot be called as a program. There should be some interdependencies between these projects or among these projects. The information should flow from one project to another project. These things should happen among the projects. Then it's called a program. So,
forget about client or customer here vivek these, these projects obviously it should be under same same customer obviously it should be under same customer if you are doing for external customers right but these projects should be related i will tell you let me complete you will get more idea on what is a program a program is a group of related projects that should be managed in a coordinated way right for example we are all working on a satellite program we are launching a satellite in isro sri harikota indian research organization we are doing a project for that so under this let us say we are doing multiple projects anil is looking into satellite designing project he will he is designing the satellite that entire designing has been taken up as a project devraj is a project manager for building the satellite so once the design is done on paper by anil that has to be built so that is second project construction of the satellite and the third one is launching the satellite so to launch the satellite the entire launching activity is taken up as a project so these are three projects is there any relation between the three are there any interdependencies between the three yes the information flow over the information flow from design project to build project or construction project from construction to launch project these are all interdependent if i ask you not to talk to each other and you have to work on a in an isolated manner what will be the status of this project the status of this project is, uh, of this program will be a big failure all the projects will fail because there are dependencies so all these three projects can be taken up as a single program because you cannot manage them individually there are interdependencies among these entities so this entire thing is taken up as a program for example let us say malleshwar is doing a website construction or a software construction project so he has been appointed as a project manager for constructing a software at the same time he has been asked to manage a swimming pool construction in the same organization the same organization they are constructing swimming pool for their employees so since maleshwar is a civil engineer by virtue of his academic qualification has been asked to look into that swimming pool project also is there any relationship between the software development project and uh, swimming pool construction project which are done by maleshwar nothing as such nothing as such they can be managed separately there are no dependencies there is no information flow among these there is no give and take among these entities so that cannot be called as a program program means the projects which should be managed in a coordinated manner together that's called a program and managing these programs is called program management and typically it is done by program manager in organizations so all related the word related is the key here it has been highlighted if you see right so these related projects can be called as a single program so this is about program management and now let us see what is portfolio management what is portfolio collection of programs actually collection of programs multiple programs will fall under portfolio or it can be collection of bigger projects and these programs or portfolios may not be related or interdependent so unrelated projects or programs unrelated programs can be called as a portfolio normally you do this portfolio management in order to achieve the strategic objectives of the organization every organization will have a vision right for example let us say the tata company in india they want to become number 1 in asia the largest company or number one company in asia for that they may start multiple projects multiple programs in various domains like they started many projects in oil and gas oil and gas extraction like reliance industries or they started many projects in power they started many projects in road infrastructure development air there's been started many projects under airport development so 
each one will be a portfolio under power they may be doing multiple programs under each program there may be multiple projects so all these projects constitute as a program and all these programs will constitute as a portfolio so the entire portfolio of oil and gas the entire portfolio of power will be managed by two portfolio managers it can be different portfolio managers or the same portfolio manager all right so portfolio is much bigger is a much bigger entity than program right so it's a collection of programs or if the projects are big if they are not unrelated if they are not related you can put under one portfolio right and you do these portfolios you manage these portfolios in order to meet the strategic business objectives the vision and mission of the organizations right this is about portfolio so collection of related projects is called anyone can answer this collection of related projects is called what you can put it you can put in the chat or if, 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 yeah program wonderful collection of programs is called what or unrelated projects or is called portfolio very good is called portfolio what is the objective of this portfolio management why should we maintain the portfolio to achieve what to achieve the strategic business objectives or visions strategic business as part of the organization strategy in order to achieve the strategic business objectives we do the portfolio management Now, now let us see what is project management. So Devraj says portfolio seems to be like ministries of government where ministers manage various pillars of country. Yeah, you can relate to that as well. Why not? Good. It's a good uh, correlation. Yeah. So portfolio ministers, no home, no, and um, we have this agriculture. Different portfolios you have, right? So, what is project management? What is project management? Simple, simple answer. Manage their projects. That's it. Manage your projects. Managing the projects is called project management. That's what we are going to learn here. How to manage the project? We are not going to tell you how to do the technical work of the project. How to manage the project? The management aspect of it we are going to discuss. How do you manage the project? We manage the project by applying knowledge, skills. tools and techniques to project activities as the project goes on you will manage this project to the success by applying your knowledge you have to apply your knowledge you have to apply your skills you have to use the tools and you have to use certain techniques so it's the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques to project activities that's how you manage the projects that's called project management right so see how a beautiful uh, pictorial representation they are given if you see <clears throat> in the circles if you see this image the person is managing the lines so he is managing it's all about the management now now let us see one of the important topics for the examination as well as the real time world project constraints project constraints so what are project constraints so what do you mean by constraint first, first let us try to understand that what do you mean by a constraint a constraint is typically a constraint is typically limiting factor anything anything that limits the progress of your project that limits the project pro, pro, progress of your project is called constraint right sometimes budget will 
Devra says constraints are like various factors which governs project. No, it's not governs, which limits, which hinders the progress of your project. Anything which hinders the progress of your project is called a constraint. So, for example, as I told before, like you are planning to go to your office and your daughter is stopping you or your son is stopping you from going to office. He asks you to stay indoors and you reach late to your office. So your manager will ask, Devraj, why are you late? My daughter is a constraint. My kid is a constraint. It's a hindrance towards me reaching to the office. So anything which hinders the progress of your project is called a project constraint. You should understand, you should identify what are the real constraints in the project. Right? There are six constraints as prescribed by PMI. Scope is a constraint. Quality is a constraint. Schedule is a constraint. Budget is a constraint. Resources are constraints. Risk is a constraint. Risk is a constraint. <clears throat> now let us try to understand each thing. Scope is a constraint. Before going to scope quality, let us see, see schedule. You will understand better, then you will understand the constraints better. Schedule is a constraint. How schedule is a constraint? You are not given sufficient timelines. You are not given sufficient schedule. In one month, you have been asked to do a project where actually it should take six months or two months. So you will tell your friends, well, they are not given me sufficient time. So schedule is a constraint. Sometimes budget is a constraint. You are not given sufficient budgets to do the project. Normally government projects always do happen. No? You, do, you, you don't have uh, sufficient uh, budgets. So budget is a constraint. You are not given sufficient money in order to do the budget. Sometimes resources are constraints. You don't get the resources. It can be human resources or it can be equipment. It can be tools, anything. So resources are constraints sometimes. Sometimes scope can be a constraint. What do you mean by scope? Let us try to understand scope. Then you will understand how scope is a constraint. Scope is the work what you are going to do in the project. Typically the work. If you are constructing a road, the scope is different. If you are constructing a software, the scope differs now. If you are into research and development of a new medicine, the scope differs. So typically, the scope, the work, what you are going to supposed to do on the project, sometimes it becomes a constraint. How? Customer doesn't give their requirements, doesn't disclose their requirements properly. Then it is a constraint. For example, you wanted to develop a website. You had an agreement with the customer. He has not given his requirements completely. Out of 100 requirements, he gave only 40. After that, customer says, I'm busy. We'll see later. You do on your own. Let us see later. Yeah. So scope is a constraint. You don't know what to do. You engage in me as a project manager for your house construction. And you told Ram, I want a duplex house. A two-story building. That's all. What are the other requirements? Can you please tell? You are not disclosing that. You are not finding time. Scope is a constraint. Or sometimes, it's a first of its kind. You have never dealt with such a work before. It's a state-of-the-art technology. You have been asked to do a project on Hadoop. Hadoop is a budding technology of late in IT. So, here scope is a constraint. Customer is not disclosing. You don't know the scope completely. Or scope you are dealing dealing for the first time. It's the first of its kind. Right? Scope is a constraint. Scope is a constraint. So Devra says, if client do not disclose the requirements, then how can we check the scope? Will be a vague idea on project we will be working on. That's what I am saying. So it's a constraint. Now it's stopping your project or not? Is it not hindering your project? Is it not a limiting factor for your project? So here scope is a constraint. Scope is a constraint. 
Sometimes quality is a constraint. The quality expectations of the customer is a big constraint. For example, you are developing a robot software, a robo software which will conduct open heart surgery. A robo like Rajini Kanta, which is conducting open heart surgery. What should be the quality of this robo or of this project? Very high. If the quality is not good, there's a huge threat on the outcome of this project. So quality expectations, boss, they are giving me money. Money is not a constraint. They are giving me sufficient time. They gave me all the resources I've worked, I've asked for. They told me everything what I want, the scope, everything. But the quality expectation is too high. It is not a website, right? Even if the website is down for one or two hours, or if an application is down for a couple of hours, chalta hai. no, it will not happen that way. So Vimal says, depends on market and people and time. Yeah, exactly. So quality is a constraint. And risk is a constraint. Too risky a project. Too many risks, a lot of uncertainties. Like you are launching a satellite from Sriharikota ISRO. It's a very risky project. Lot of uncertainty. Till the last 11th hour, you never know if it will fly or not. Right. So too many risks in the project is also a constraint. Right. So these are called the project constraints. So project constraints are what? Scope, quality, schedule, budget, resources and risks. I am giving you 30 seconds time. Now it will take one minute. I want everyone to remember the project constraints. We are not completed this topic. We are going to see in this six, three are very important. Uh, we are going to cover that subsequently. So I'm giving you 30 seconds to one minute time. Remember this. According to PMI, there are four types of organizations. By virtue of authority of project manager, remember here, whether project manager is active, whether the project manager is powerful or project manager is there for the heck of it, based on the project manager's authority, they divided into four. The first one is, functional organization the second one is matrix organization the third one is projectized organization the fourth one is composite organization so what is a functional organization the entire organization is divided as departments each department will have a functional head like hr department you have hr vice president or general manager Finance department. Function means department, remember. Function means a team or department. Generally, we call it as function. You heard any time called HR function? Yeah, HR department. So, it is divided into departments. Each department will have a functional head. So, now let, let me show you that. Functional organization. If you have a CEO who is heading. You have a CEO who is heading the organization. Under CEO, you have a functional manager, HR head, engineering head, marketing head, sales head, you will have it. There may be some projects happening in each department. You don't have dedicated staff or project manager to manage these projects. So the staff within the department, they involve in this project. Let us say HR department, they, are, they started a project to reduce the attrition rate of the employees. Employees are resigning left, right and center. So they, they started a project to motivate the employees and to ensure the employee retention, they started some motivation project. In that project, the HR people, few people of the HR will involve and there may not be any dedicated project manager. Remember. So what will happen? They will report, they will report to the functional manager itself, HR head, vice president, you know, on the progress of this project or general manager of head of HR, they will be reporting them. Here you don't have project manager at all. The functional manager may play a role of project manager temporarily. And the staff, once they are done with this project, they come to their routine mundane work. Right? Once I am done, I will go into recruitment again. Right? Such organization is called functional organization. So if you see the grade boxes, 
they are engaging in those respective projects let us take the second one is the sales department so the sales department assume that they started some project sales project the sales project to increase the sales or they want to launch some product so the sales staff may involve in that project and once it is done they may come down to their routine work such a setup is called functional organization now let us see projectized organization matrix i will come back again the entire organization is divided into projects here you don't have much of the departments here project manager is very powerful that all the projects are headed by project managers and these project managers they report into the ceo i heard accenture is a projectized organization and for in that project itself you have some hr people you have some engineering people in the in the same project you have, you may have some finance people and all these guys they report into project manager the project is so big right you have dedicated hr finance guys and they will be reporting into the project manager such an organization is called projectized organization in it it is slightly there in construction normally you have projectized organization so if you see the diagram you will have a better understanding of this projectized organization so the entire organization is divided into projects you, the ceo will be there on the top and the project managers will be reporting into the chief executive and you have staffs who are working this project staff working in this project from various departments and they will be all reporting into the project manager they will be all reporting into the project manager such an organization is called projectized organization here we have a disadvantage can anyone tell what is the disadvantage with the projectized organization very good so when the project is finished they don't have the team members they don't have any home homeless the team members are homeless actually team members are homeless if the project is done whereas in uh, in uh, if you see functional organization even once the project is done they go to go back to the regular work so the hr people if they involve in any project to increase the return age of the employees once the project is done they will go back and report to the general manager and they will be doing their routine activities in project as organization you will be moving on bench or homeless whatever you say once the project is done till the time you get inducted into the new project right and now let us see matrix what do you mean by matrix mix of both mix of two things is called matrix generally right so you have a flavor of both projectized organization and functional organization such entity is called a matrix again in matrix we have three different types weak matrix balanced matrix and strong matrix here matrix means you have both two bosses yes as as kadija is saying two bosses matrix means both are there so we have a functional manager who is heading and we have a project manager so typically you have two bosses functional manager and project manager out of these sometimes one will be weak one will be strong sometimes both will be equal based on the authority of the functional manager and project manager they divided into three weak matrix here one is weak who is that project manager is weak project manager is weak balanced matrix both the project manager and functional manager both are equally strong when i say weak it's not physical decision making should i take any human resources those decisions budget allocations fund releasing these authorities i'm talking about in balanced matrix both have equal powers in strong matrix obviously strong means project manager is strong here however both are present so in matrix again you have three weak matrix balanced matrix and strong matrix gentlemen this is very very important topic i need your attention and your understanding to the core what is weak matrix i told project manager is weak here and functional manager is strong <clears throat> again in weak we have two levels one first level is 
project expediter i am putting in the chat the second level is project coordinator project expediter and we again in week again you have two levels one is very weak other is weak right project expediter is very weak there is a mere a project coordinator sorry a mere expediter where he send the communication he will send weekly report to customers right he will do all the clerical jobs just clerical jobs he will do the bookings for all the team members when he, when they are traveling right if they are traveling overseas so he doesn't have any decision making a purely communication role such role is called expediter coordinator is better than the two he is also weak but at least he can take small decision small decision making will be there small levels of decision making will be there such is called project coordinator such a person is called project coordinator like both are weak husbands both are henpacked husbands but one is very weak husband we can call it as you can call him as expediter one is a weak husband so one doesn't have even authority what to cook on that day both are cooking both are weak husbands so what do you want me to cook today hey you cook uh, dal paneer butter masala today the wife says he is expediter at least those small decisions what to cook on a particular day will be taken by a project coordinator they have some sort of decision making right okay. clear gentlemen about matrix yes yes yeah. so i know we are all expediters or coordinators in house you know? so that is weak matrix so if you see this diagram you will understand better <clears throat> functional organization and then the matrix and then the projectized in matrix under matrix again you have weak matrix balanced matrix and strong matrix project manager's authority in functional there is none from there to low low to moderate moderate to high high to almost total resource availability he he will be given resources who manages the project budget here functional functional here it will be mixed here it will project manager it will be project manager project manager's role part time part time from here it will be be full time right the project management administrative staff the staff that are provided some it will be part time in these cases normally and as you go from left to right towards projectized the project manager will become omnipotent and omnipresent he becomes very very strong as the organization moves towards projectized style right so and the last one is composite there is nothing special it is a combination of all three so in a big organization in some places you have functional setup in some you have matrix setup in some places you have projectized composite it's a combination of all the three types of organizations like functional matrix and projectized right there that's called composite organization right so now gentlemen i want answers from you what are the four types of org structures you have as per pmi you can unmute and you can say quickly if you want ट्रिक्स <laughs> Levels. So there, are, there are two types of levels. Mm. One is one is the project manager, one is the project coordinator. Where in the project manager, the project manager does not have any power on decision making. Wonderful. Whereas the project manager probably has influence on decision making. Influence on decision making. 
wonderful so which structure will have two bosses anyone two bosses will be seen in which structure is it functional projectized or matrix two bosses where do, when do you have matrix matrix you, yeah, you know yeah. Yeah, i told you have functional managers and project managers so team members normally they will have two bosses they will be reporting to the project manager and they will be reporting into the functional manager especially yeah from balance it may start from balance it may start But to be more precise from balance matrix it may start okay wonderful wonderful and in which structure in which structure you have you the team members become homeless in project based in project based organization. organization in project based organization wonderful so having known these concepts you will get at least 2 to 3 marks in the examination so 2 3 2 to 3 marks out of 200 is already in your kitty start counting your marks yeah mm -hmm. and now let us uh, try to understand the opa organization processes i promised you remember i told when we are discussing yes. about pmo i told that i will will discuss about developing and managing the opa organization processes now we are going to do that so organizational process assets what is the asset for any process what is the asset of a process nothing but documentation in layman language if we have to say opa is nothing but documentation documentation so normally for a process the artifacts and documentation they play a vital role they play a vital role right so what are those like company standards and policies all the documentation related to standard policies quality policies templates every organization we have the templates no? these templates will be used by different people like risk register like project charter you have all the ready made templates you take the templates and you start populating the data into it right various guidelines proposal evaluation criteria how do you evaluate a proposal submitted by various vendors they'll have a criteria established even for you various vendors should have submitted for pmp training we give for 9000 we give for 5000 we give for 6000 some people may say we give for 10000 11000 but some may say we give pass warranty some may say we give quality trainer so you evaluate each proposal that is given to you by various vendors so the, the, in organizations normally they establish the proposal evaluation criteria how do you if a, different criteria uh, different proposals are given by different vendors how do you evaluate the proposals that they will establish the criteria how do you measure the performance performance measurement criteria communication guidelines so when the communication should happen how the communication should happen at an organization level they will have the things defined you should send a weekly report to the customer you should send through mail or you should upload in a sharepoint in a central repository so they have their guidelines project closure guidelines when do you close a project and what what methodology you follow when you are closing the project financial control procedures issue how do you manage the issues how do you manage the defects how do you control the changes the change control how do you manage the risks all these things will be documented which acts as a ready enough for you when you are managing the project so all these artifacts all this documentation like work authorization can anyone tell what is work authorization any idea heard any time or any guesses don't worry even if you are incorrect okay i want people should think i want that instigation should happen in the people even if you are incorrect there's nothing crime maybe uh, 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 the permission given, given for the 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 for the
ஒர்க்கிங்ஸ்ட்ரக்டிங்ஸ்ட்ரக்டிங்ஸ்ட்ரக்டிங் to paint the walls sir should i start painting what you will say i gone mad or what i have not completed even the construction of the wall i have to put the plastering and then you can you should start the painting i will tell you when you should start your work okay don't come come and don't nag me every day no uh, don't disturb me. so those work authorizations are when the people are authorized to start their work to kick start their work normally in organizations they establish it's not vimal it's not like a work permit you can say it's a work permit as well when are you permitted to start your work if you take that way yes that is right work permit and even the knowledge base will fall under opa all your documentation knowledge base like no project files historical information these are very important historical information historical information and lessons learned these are very very important because these lessons learned documents will be helpful for the future generation in order to not to repeat the same mistakes it can be useful to you or even the future generations and even the historical files project files information your corporation management databases financial databases so all related to document lessons learned artifacts templates all fall under opa organization process assets i want everyone to understand this what is with this opa the asset related to a process because at least we'll be using 60 to 70 times in the next 15 days as part of the training 16 60 to 70 times we are going to use so every time i'm not going to repeat i just say opa organization process assets right so this is a only one time i'll be telling you next time onwards i just refer the word opa and you have to recollect what is opa so now can anyone contribute what do you mean by opa database history issue issue lesson learned financial database yes all the all the lessons learned documentation all the historical files which are assets for any organization related to the process they are called organization process assets and now let us see now let us see yeah there are you are correct it's like a repository and now let us see one more word similar to opa at least even we use this the same like for 60 to 70 times all throughout the training this is enterprise environmental factors eef it's popularly known as eef e e f enterprise environmental factors what do you mean by e e f enterprise environmental factors enterprise environmental factors are like any factor outside your project external to your project which can influence your project is called enterprise environmental factors remember it's not internal any external factor it's going to affect your project it's called eef enterprise environmental factors outside your project that can be within your organization or outside organization for example you are working in microsoft you are a project manager for one of the projects so outside your project within microsoft it can impact your project suddenly assume that microsoft is in financial problems or bankrupt i forbid it shouldn't happen i forbid okay assume example will it not impact your project yes microsoft microsoft financial position that is external to project it has nothing to do internal to your project or outside microsoft also like government decisions the the government asked the government asked to stop all it projects it's a government decision is it not going to impact your project yes 
So, force majority. Force majority. Yes, of course. Force majority by natural calamities, catastrophes. That's EF one. Act of God. Yeah. The God has done that. We can't do anything. There's a there's a there's an earthquake. It's an extra <coughs> that will impact you. Government orders. orders. Yes. So company culture. Yeah. That yeah. example is referring the DBT and the other project. Free election. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good example. So company culture. It will have impact on your project. The company culture very very bureaucratic. It will have impact on your project. Any approval, you will ask buy me a desktop for my team. They will buy after one year. Will it not impact your project? Yes. Or your company doesn't allow females to work in the night shift. That can have impact on your project. Your 24 by 7 project. Government standards. Political climate. If you have been asked to do a project in Afghanistan, where there is a lot of political instability. Yeah. Or Iraq. Will it not have impact on your project? Yes. Infrastructure. Existing infrastructure in the organization. That will have impact on your project. They don't even have mouse also. Our keyboards are also not good. And you have, you have been asked to do a big project. No infrastructure. It will have impact on your project. Existing human resources. Bench strength. You don't have skilled people on the bench. Right? It will have impact on your project. HR policies. That is personal administration. It's a hire and fire company. Hire them. The moment the work is done, don't make them sit on the bench. Fire them. Then people won't come and join your company over a period of time. That will have impact on your project. The work authorization system, which we already discussed. Marketplace conditions. The market is not good. You know, US, what happened to the US market? And it had impact on IT projects. Isn't it? It's outside your project. Stakeholder risk tolerances. So one minute, I think there are so many comments are coming. One minute, one minute with the news. Devra says, is there a contingency plan or backup plan if these factors come to place? Yes, we'll, we'll discuss in risk management. We'll discuss in risk management, Devraj. So Khadija says, not relevant for PMP for this topic. I didn't get you, Khadija. What do you mean by not relevant for PMP for this topic? So Devra says, I think it comes under the risk mitigation issues which impact the project. That's why I asked the question. Yes, of course, yes. yes. And uh, stakeholder risk tolerances, the common availability of the information like commercial databases, PMIS, project management information system. Though it looks very fancy, PMIS is nothing but any system which stores your information, your knowledge base or any information where you can retrieve, store and retrieve. Assume that you have a state of the art information system where your project information is stored or your world project data is stored. How easy it would be for you to search and do it. If you don't have such a system, you have to open each document to find out what is there in each document. Assume that there is no search option. What will happen? How difficult for you to retrieve the data? How much time it will consume for you to retrieve the data? It's like a Google they are talking to. Google of your company, PMIS, is nothing but the Google the st st storage storing engine no? research uh, search engine or a storing system where all your data is stored the PMIS project management information system right if you don't have such a system everyone is it's not centralized everyone are keeping in their desktops how difficult it would be to get the data so it will have an impact on your project so any factor which is external outside your project is called EEF Right, these are called enterprise environmental factors. Now, question, question, gentlemen, what do you mean by EEF? Anyone? Enterprise, enterprise environmental factors. Yeah, are the, 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 the environment. environment. These are these are external or internal? External. External. External factors. Wonderful. 
Now let us try to understand a word called stakeholder. Anyone, what do you mean by stakeholder, Jim? Someone who is in charge of your task. Someone is in charge of your task. Who are responsible for the execution of the task. Who are responsible for the execution of the task. Okay. Any more contributions? I agree. I will take both both of yours. Or beneficiary. Or beneficiary also. Not only not only tax. Beneficiary. Why not? Yeah. Oh. Now let us see what is stakeholder. A stakeholder is the one who is involved. Who is involved in the project? Who is negatively or positively impacted by the project? Who can negatively or positively can impact the project? Right. As a team member, you are involved in the project. You are a stakeholder. You can negatively impact the project. You can positively impact the project if you are doing well. Because of you, your customer may be negatively impacted. You are positively impacted. So anyone who is negatively or positively impacted or who can impact negatively or positively is called a stakeholder. Normally, in financial terms, we see we, we, we say stakeholders are normally who has a stake in the company financially or the customer. But anyone who can negatively or positively impact or get impacted, they're all stakeholders. For example, you are constructing a chemical factory. The neighborhood around the chemical factory will be negatively impacted because of the pollution from the chemical factory. So even they are stakeholders because they're negatively impacted with the Chem pollution from the chemical factory. But it doesn't but it matter. Doesn't matter, matter uh, 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 right? Sorry? Um, uh, these people these around, people they, around they, don't they don't matter, matter in the organization. The organization. They, they matter. They matter. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, then uh, uh, they, are, they are maybe passive, passive stakeholders, stakeholders or, something. or something. Whatever may be, but still they are stakeholders. See, remember uh, what PMP yeah. says yeah. is, you should have social responsibility first and then the project. Okay. okay. Right. So first the social responsibility, then the organization responsibility, then the project responsibility, then the self have responsibility. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is an example. It can be your sponsor, your customer, your users. What is the difference between customer and users, gentlemen? Anyone? Um, Difference um, between customer and user. Maybe, maybe customer, is customer is a person who buys, buys a particular, particular project. project. He is like a client like a for a uh, 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 company. company. The user, the user is, is somebody, 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 somebody who uses, who uses our product. product. It could be common public. public. Like we are like users, we are users of, of meeting. meeting. Okay. And maybe some Okay. Okay. You are. You are. You are very close. You are very close. A customer is the one so who we are buys. We are user. One who buys. Sorry. The... Sorry. Yeah. Please go ahead. Sorry. No. 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 Yeah. A customer is the one who buys. Who pays the money for this uh, entity? Is a customer. One who uses will become the end user or the user. For example, you are working for Infosys. Let us say you are for Infosys. And Infosys is doing is providing, let us say, ATM services to State Bank of India, SBI Bank, State Bank of India. For SBI, 
Infosys is the customer because Infosys, sorry, for Infosys, SBI is the customer. Infos, for Infosys, SBI is the customer because SBI pays money to Infosys. But the uh, let us say ATM services they are providing. But the ATM services they are used by public like us. We are all the end users. We are not directly paying to Infosys. It's a SBI which is paying to Infosys. So the SBI IT head or someone, they will be the customer for Infosys and we are all the end users. It's like, no, you are paying school fees for your kid. You are the customer for the school. But who is the end user? It's your kid who is using the services actually, consuming the service actually. So one who consumes a service or a entity is called the end user. One who pays for it is called the customer. You are your vendors, their stakeholders, your business partners, organization groups, functional managers. In a way, everyone is a stakeholder. Is it clear, gentlemen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful. And now let us see project team. What do you mean by project team? Anybody who is working or associated in the project is a project team. A project team will have project management staff project staff, experts, consultants you may hire from outside, user representative or customer representatives, vendors, your business partners, can anyone be part of the project team? So what is difference between project management staff and project staff? You have to understand here. Project management staff means some te te senior, senior team members along with project manager they will be given the responsibility of managing the project. Some senior team members. Let us say I have 20 members team. Right. In that, I have selected Devraj, Anil and Maleshwar being the seniors as a project, as a management team. Right. I am the project manager. These are the senior guys, team leads or whatever you say. They will be managing on behalf of me because I cannot do all the activities. I will get the management things done by them. So they become the project management staff. Project staff means your typical palanquin bearers, no, the technical people who are working in the project. They are the project staff, the team members. They will be the project staff. Supporting experts, you may take some external experts, no, they support user representatives, customer representatives, sellers, vendors. Because you you have a lot of vendor dependency in the project. You'll be buying some softwares from Microsoft. You'll be buying hardware from Dell. You'll be buying routers and switches from Cisco. If you are into a construction project, you'll be buying cement. You'll be buying iron. You'll be buying steel. Yeah. So, Devara says, then project staff doesn't have decision-making authority. Yes. Normally, yes. Normally, you have a separate project management staff. They may have some empowerment that is done. And this is the project life cycle, right? The start of the project. You organize and prepare the work that is more related to the plan, carrying out the project work, right? And closing the project. So these are the stages of a project life cycle, right? This will already be discussed. And we discussed five process groups. What are the five process groups, gentlemen? Anyone quickly? Five process groups. Initiation, planning, planning uh, uh, execution, execution uh, uh, monitoring, monitoring and control, and, control and, closure. and closure. And closure. Wonderful. Wonderful. And these are the 10 knowledge areas, okay, which we discussed as part of, uh, uh, slightly as part of this uh, demo. These are the 10 chapters. I told we have total 11 chapters. One chapter we have finished with the project management framework. What is the first chapter? project management framework and th these are the 10 chapters project integration management scope management time management cost quality human resource communications risk procurement and stakeholder management I am giving you two minutes time I request you all to remember these knowledge areas it's very very important that you remember these knowledge areas